If you're planning a drive anywhere in northwestern Ontario this summer, there's something big you should know about. Well, actually several big, very distinctive things. Here to explain from our studio at Confederation College in Thunder Bay, our northwestern Ontario hub editor, John Thompson. Welcome, John. Hey, Jan. Thanks for having me. Now, for Ontarians who have not taken a trip to your neck of the woods, what do a giant moose, goose, a Sasquatch, and a massive mosquito all have in common? Well, what they all have in common, Jan, is that they're giant things on the side of the highway uh, as you travel through northwestern Ontario. Uh, up northwestern Ontario, once you get past Sault Ste. Marie, uh, you hit about a town every hour on the Trans-Canada Highway. And uh, in many of these towns, uh, the, the business sector is off the highway. Uh, and so to attract these, uh, these tourists through or people traveling through northwestern Ontario, um, the, the business sectors launched uh, starting about 60 years ago, these giant things on the side of the highway. Uh, you could look at them as Ontario's original open for business signs, if you like. Now, some of these large, you know, kind of attractions have names, including Max the Moose. But this moose also has a whole festival named after. Tell me about that. Max the Moose was named uh, almost a decade after it was created. Max the Moose was the first one uh, in northwestern Ontario anyway. Uh, there was a traveling merchant who was building these things. It built the moose uh, in Dryden. It, be, it also built a Sasquatch that ended up in, in Vermilion Bay. And about 10 years later, a radio disc jockey with CKDR in Dryden uh, determined that the moose ought to have a name. And so he went and sat inside of the antlers um, atop this, this, you know, for foot moose and did the radio broadcast from there announced that they were going to name the moose uh, they came up with max the moose uh, which were maximilian rather because he's a maximum sized moose uh, and he's one in a million um, and so there's it's true of most of these things uh, that they have some kind of local flavor to them that there's pranks and things that happen to them throughout their history uh, and that that gives them a little bit of depth and local color now I want to move on to another attraction. Uh, apparently the most famous of the roadside monuments is the Wawa Goose. What's the story behind that one? Al Turcott, a businessman in Wawa, before the highway even went that far, the highway once stopped in Sault Ste. Marie, and Al Turcott uh, and a group of four other, uh, other men uh, who came to be known as the Wawa Four uh, went on a trip through the woods and dragged vehicle all the way to the Sioux from Wawa uh, in what came um, to, to show them that Wawa could be attached to the highway. This is how easy it was. This is how close it was. The highway was eventually built to Wawa, but it didn't go into the town. So the same with, uh, with Dryden and many of these other communities. Um, the, the highway goes right alongside it. So you're going to come up over the hill as you've been traveling on the, along this gorgeous landscape of the north shore of Lake Superior. And all of a sudden, you come upon this humongous goose sitting on the side of the highway. So this is the, the kind of the first stop in northwestern Ontario as it becomes more, as Ontario becomes more and more sort of wildernessy uh, along the Trans-Canada. Um, and they say that it is the most photographed of these landmarks across Canada. Now, these sorts of statues can be found all across Canada, but what makes these ones in northern Ontario unique? What makes them unique is that our economy is traditionally uh, associated with the resource extractive industries. Uh, and the commercial uh, sectors that need to support our towns uh, have a limited uh, ability to do so uh, just by virtue of, of economies of scale and just that they're small towns. And so in the example I used of Dryden, um, the, the highway in Dryden flows right alongside of the rail line, but the, com but the downtown area in Dryden is across the rails. So you have to go past Max the Moose under an underpass or before Max the Moose overpass to get into downtown Dryden. And it's that way in a lot of communities. So the, what they had hoped to do, um, these, these uh, business people in chambers of commerce in the 1960s and 70s, is just get tourists out of the car, stretching their legs, going to the washroom, going into the tourist information center, and then maybe thinking about having a meal or buying at that point probably a a shirt with a Canadian flag on it or something like that. You know what I'm thinking? Road trip. Tell so, me. 
You'll have to Absolutely. join me. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always You're a welcome anytime, Jan. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, John Thompson, our Ontario Hub Editor from Northwestern Ontario. Thank you again. Thanks so much. The Agenda in the Summer with Nam Kiwanuka is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.